Basically, the verse and the riff of Minstrel in the Gallery. Uh, Minstrel in the Gallery was a product of the more complex writing of Jethro Tell, so uh, um, it's, it's a riff that d doesn't really sort of sit in, 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 uh, in a place where you would normally write a riff. It's, uh, you know, uh, starting in, in an unusual place in the bar. So it, it was, which makes it unique. Uh, and I, I remember learning it in, I think it was the Stone Studio in Bermondsey for some reason. It, it seems to come to mind that we were, we were shut in this rather nasty basement for months and months learning music. But um, I know that Geoffrey Hammond, the bass player, couldn't, didn't understand the riff. So he didn't quite know where the beat was, so we, we taped a drumstick to the bottom of his shoe and made him tap his shoe while he played the riff. That's how we learnt it. But it's, uh, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a, a long piece of music uh, and, and I wrote a big introduction, instrumental part to it, uh, which we only played at the time we, we were uh, touring that album. And then there's a, an acoustic beginning to the song. I mean, it's, it's, it's quite a, a, a big, complicated piece of music. The band struggled all the time because I think we were trying to push the boundary and, and, and that was the the essence of Jethro Tull was never to just sit where we were and we're always pushing forward trying to find new things just just extend the musicality of the band and, and I think the same way that other bands in the late 60s early 70s late 70s, we were all learning how to play our instruments, so uh, the, the obvious way to learn is, is to write music, which is just a little bit beyond your capability. And I, it, it, it was, so we, we always found it difficult, but, but then once we'd found a way of playing it, we then move on to the next stage, and so that, that musical quality hopefully was always improving. There was never conflict about the music in the band. Uh, we, were, we took it so seriously, I mean, maybe too seriously. I, I think we were just so intense in, in the approach to what we were doing. Uh, but we, we, it was a band and, and we all were very, very close together. We helped each other. If somebody couldn't play a piece of music, we just laughed at them. Oh no, that's not helping, is it? But it, it was... It was a very tight group of people and uh, we were very, very much in the same boat uh, and we were all adding ideas, you know, whether it was just into the guitar parts or the drum parts or just adding little bits into the arrangement. Uh, th th there, was, there was a lot of input uh, into, into the arranging and the writing of the music. Did we ever go too far musically? Yes. Yes, but that's good, because once you've done it, you don't go there again. Uh, I think the danger was we, we, we'd uh, shut ourselves away and we, we didn't have any out, outside influence. You know, we, we weren't going to the record label, um, other musicians, friends, and saying, oh, we just recorded these two songs, what do you think? And they'd probably go, that's really weird, <laughs> we don't understand it. And we go, oh, oh no, we better rethink it. Uh, we're very insulated and that's never a good thing in the, long, in the long term. It works because whatever comes out of that situation is unique, but then you just get so wound up in what you're doing that, that you don't have any control, that there's no uh, benchmark as to what works well, what doesn't work. Uh, and I would say the point we reached that was under wraps, which was actually 
an album of great songs, working with a, an amazing musician, Peter Vitesi, who had just joined the band. I mean, he was an amazing keyboard player, and, and he was writing arrangements and, and injecting chords and riffs and ideas into the music that, that were really, really hard to play. And, 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 and I was having to try and keep up, because what would happen would there be a song that Ian would, would present to us, and then he'd say, right, we, we need a, a piece of instrumental music in the middle. And then so Peter would be like, I mean, Peter was so quick that, I, that it was a race who could be the first to come up with an idea. But, uh, yeah, it, it, but it, it, it's, at the end of it, it was in the wrong direction. It was drum machines, uh, too much keyboard, and, and the tall audience didn't like it. We, we sort of lost the direction that we needed to go in. Uh, we play Minstrel in the gallery on, on the new album, Order of Play, but it's one of the few songs that uh, it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's, it's, uh, it works perfectly and, and playing it for the first time in 30 years, it, it, it seemed to be relevant. You know, the riff, it's a good riff, it's a good song, it's a strong, strong piece of music. Uh, it, it was very complete and, and, and that's good. If, it's, if it sounds okay, that's the end of it. Just do it.